Hello and welcome to your breakthrough hour. It is a joy to meet you even through this broadcast. And today we're continuing on uh, having a spiritual family, or in other words, to develop or create an atmosphere in the family where there'll be peace. Family is a very important part in our lives. Family is important in the eyes of God. Not only that, he is the author of the idea called family. God always used families to further his purposes and he blessed them. So also the enemy's constant target is the family. And that's why it's important that we really know how to protect our family from the attacks of the enemy. Maybe you are going through a challenging time in your family or you are looking for answers concerning how to have an atmosphere of peace, healing, restoration, and reconciliation in the family. I believe this teaching is going to help you. So shall we go? Creating an atmosphere in the family, which is a spiritual atmosphere. Isaiah 32 verse 18. My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation. Look at that. There is peace. In secure dwellings, there is security, which is a, a, a place for acceptance, right? There is acceptance of each other. And in quiet resting places, which is rest is a consequence of kindness uh, and unconditional love. So we've been looking into this and uh, God says, my people, God wants his people, his children to have a blessed family. And we've been looking at a few keys of how we can really experience this in our lives. Uh, we saw how prayer plays a vital role, praying together, praying alone and even fasting and praying uh, at times, at regular times. Secondly, we saw about how dedicating the house to the Lord will be a great way of inviting the presence of God into our families. Today, we're going to see the power of the blood of Jesus. How through the power of the blood of Jesus we can create an atmosphere of peace in the family. Now these are very important teachings. In case you missed our, our past teachings, um, you can go to our YouTube channel English Space FCC which you see on the screen. Please go and watch, you can subscribe. And if you feel blessed, please leave a comment in the section and you can share it with someone who is in need of in this area. Well, when we go to Exodus chapter 12, we see the children of Israel getting ready to leave Egypt because God had intervened in a supernatural way by raising up his servant Moses. And Moses goes to talk to Pharaoh, and does signs and wonders before him. And he tells him right on, being the mouthpiece of God as a prophet, 
Let my people go that they may serve me. So God's desire was the children of Israel be delivered, be released, be free. And number two, free for what? That they may serve the Lord. And that is God's desire for each one of us. You know, God gives us his freedom when we put our trust on his son. And that is the born again experience. And once you have this freedom, God wants you to have a life free from fear, free from pain free from whatever harassments that the world or the devil might throw at you. And as you're free, God wants you to celebrate your freedom by serving him with all your heart. Now that's something important. We see in Exodus 12, the last plague of the 10 plagues being unleashed upon the people of Egypt, where the firstborn of every family, be it man or animals, beasts, every firstborn is killed. But God makes a way of escape to the children of Israel through the blood of the Passover lamb. Now, this was a revelation to the children of Israel. Never had it happened earlier. Abraham did not know it, nor any of the forefathers knew about this kind of a protection that happens through the blood. But God told them very specifically. I want to read from verse 21 onwards, Exodus 12 to 23. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourselves according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. Did you listen? He said, this is the Passover, the first feast, among the seven other, you know, the total number of feasts are seven. And he says, pick a lamb for a family. Family was important in the eyes and is important still today in the eyes of God. He did not say one lamb for the entire children of Israel, he said one lamb for each family, meaning each family had to do something for their own deliverance, for their own protection, for creating an atmosphere of peace and security and rest in their families. Verse 22, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood of the Passover lamb, obviously, that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. So this was, I mean, these were clear instructions. The blood of the lamb taken in a bowl and a bunch of hyssop is dipped and then taken, put it on the lintel of the entrance door and on the doorposts. So they are smeared with the blood of the Passover lamb 
And every one of the house needs to be inside until morning. So they cannot just apply the blood then go out. It meant that they need to be under the protection of the blood of the Passover lamb. 23. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. Amazing. Every family member in each family needs to stay inside the blood protection of the house. And God said, I will pass over. So God personally kind of inspected every house. When he inspected every house, he says, I will not let or allow the destroyer now, that was an angel of death. So God said, I will not allow him to come into your houses to strike you. Meaning, any house that did not have the blood of the Passover lamb, for example, the houses of Egyptians, the destroyer would go inside and kill the firstborn of man and beast. So this blood of the Passover lamb was like a, a password, a secret code, a key to get into protection that is beyond human knowledge and beyond human understanding as well as power. Now, they, they did it and it exactly happened. None of the children of Israel died, but there was howling in the, in the houses of Egypt. If you read Exodus 12, we read that in verse 30. So Pharaoh rose, in the, Pharaoh rose in the night, he and he, all his servants and all the Egyptians. For there was a great cry in Egypt. But there was not a house where there was not one dead. Every family was hit. There was a great cry. But here, the children of Israel had a key, a secret code, a pass code, which is the blood of the Passover lamb and, and staying inside the blood smeared houses. They were protected. This is a picture of how Jesus would shed his blood for us. And it's also a powerful prophetic picture of how the blood of Jesus is the protection for every family, for every home. As we saw in the last episode of how it's important uh, it, to dedicate the house to the Lord before we even come in and live there. Abraham sacrificed on an altar that he built in every place that he went. There was a shedding of blood and this sacrifice was dedicating the land to God because the land was in control of people earlier who had dedicated those lands 
to unknown spirits whom they believed. And when the house, when the land was dedicated, it was cleansed. And I want to tell you, this is the next level where you sprinkle the blood of Jesus. And when you sprinkle the blood of Jesus, now dedication happens once, right? When you move into the house, you dedicate the house once. And you, you say, God, this place is for you. We consecrate it to you. Uh, be the owner of this atmosphere and prevail and move in this place and so on and so forth. We can always rededicate, but primarily it is done once. But then the cleansing and the protection is needed again and again. Just like how we would sweep a room. Because if we are not going to sweep a room, the house is going to become dirty. The room is going to become dusty. So what we do, we need to clean the room. Maybe you sweep the floor. We sweep it or we mop it. And we clean. We take a piece of cloth to clean the furnitures and and so on and so forth. And that is that has to be done regularly. You know, we do it regularly. That is cleansing. But then there is also the protection needed for the house. The spiritual protection. So the cleansing and the protection happens through the blood of Jesus. We read in 1st John chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Hebrews 9, verses 13 and 14. I want you to read it later. But verse 14 tells, How much more shall the blood of Christ, through the, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Again, the blood of Jesus cleanses your conscience and the blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse our lives and the atmosphere because the blood of Jesus works in the spiritual realm and the spiritual realm means the atmosphere even the house that we live the room that your children have you know Job realized the importance of importance of cleansing that every time his children had a time of celebration, he would call them forth. And uh, the next day he would offer sacrifices for their cleansing. So the blood of Jesus is the power to cleanse your home. And especially when people come in and go out who knows, you know, you had people who carried the wrong kind of a spirit. And because of God in your life, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, you can actually apply the blood of Jesus in your house, in your room, and, and pray cleansing in that atmosphere. And it happens, I tell you, it happens. So the room is cleansed, the house is cleansed. And whatever evil, whatever evil influence that has been brought in through anyone, 
who may be known to you or unknown to you and you don't. You know, there, there are people who can carry an influence. Everyone carries an influence, you know, especially when it's, when it's the influence of the Holy Ghost. It is a blessing. A man of God, a woman of God walks into a house. Someone who fears the Lord comes into the house. And that's a conversation. There is a meeting. There is, a, I tell you, it is a blessing. We read how prophets like Elijah, Elisha stayed in houses that brought blessing. Peter and Paul stayed in houses that brought blessing to those houses. Jesus himself going and staying in houses, bringing blessing to that houses. But that, that's again the, those who would carry a wrong spirit and they could come in and, and maybe through their words, through them coming there or whatever things that they bring into that place or give as gifts can actually bring the wrong influence. For some people, what I'm trying to say might be too much, but even if, it, if you feel too much, that, that's true. Just because something seems to be too much doesn't mean that it's not true. It is. That's how the spirit realm functions. And that is why we need the blood of Jesus to protect our families, to protect our houses, to protect our homes, to protect our premises. Hallelujah. I believe this is a very powerful teaching. And if you would get this thing into your heart and if you would go and practice it, this is going to really bring the protection of God upon your family. It's going to bring peace into your family. Hebrews 12, 24. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. This is how a New Testament believer, how he has reached a place in the spiritual atmosphere. The author of Hebrews writes, what are all the privileges of a new covenant believer, a child of God. So we have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. We have come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Now the blood of Abel spoke judgment upon Cain who killed Abel. But the blood of Jesus pleads, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But at the same time, it is a blood that protects because the blood of the Passover lamb was only a shadow of the blood of Jesus that was to come, which would not only protect our soul, but our bodies as well. Our spirits, minds, and bodies, our families, even everything that is inside of your house will be protected. You know, the new covenant is greater than the old covenant and it, it includes the privileges of the old covenant. I'll give you an example. In the old covenant, the protection of the Passover lamb's blood was only on their bodies, on their physical lives, of course, on the entire house. The blood of the Passover lamb never had any impact on their spirits. It could not make them born again because it was just the blood of a lamb. But the blood of the lamb of God slain from the foundations of the earth. I'm getting excited when I speak about this. The blood of Jesus Christ has the power. It has the power 
to not only protect our spirits and our souls, but it can also protect what the Passover lamb's blood protected, meaning our bodies, our physical lives, everything inside your house, every equipment. You know, if, if you have this thing of your equipments at home getting repaired, you know, first your refrigerator got off and then you try to fix it and then your dishwash got up and then you try to fix it. Then something went wrong with the air conditioner and then you try to fix it. And when you think that, ah, it's all done, you feel your automobile, your car or your bike or whatever it is, something went wrong with that. And that is where you need to apply the blood of Jesus. Now, how do you do that? Through your words. As a prophetic act, you can take a jar of water or a tumbler of water and, 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 and pray over that and say, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that this water be turned into the very blood of Jesus. You speak words. Then you take it and sprinkle it all over the place. All over your house, all over those equipments. Sprinkle it. Sprinkle the blood of Jesus Christ. Sprinkle the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And there is protection in your house. There is spiritual protection. There is emotional protection. There is physical protection. Protection over the materials of your home. Even the car or whatever, the bike or whatever. You know, I remember way back, right from my childhood, I remember my mom taking the Bible, having a glass of water and reading Isaiah 53, Psalm 91 and praying the water, speaking the word of God. And it's a prophetic act sprinkling all over the house saying the blood of Jesus Christ is victorious. And, and my wife picked it up from my mom and, and we, we continue to do it even till this very day, once a week. We sprinkle the blood of Jesus all over our house, kitchen and, and everywhere. And there is protection. I tell you, it, it works. You will have peace, you'll have security, you'll have rest. Amen. I believe that you have received something from today's teaching and I believe that you would take this and, and, and apply it and use it in your family and sprinkle the blood of Jesus. Speak the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus to protect your family. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of the blood of Jesus that cleanses and protects. That not only protects our spiritual part, our spirit and soul and mind, but also protects our bodies and even the material things around in the family and our going forth and coming in. And thank you for the, uh, for the word that has touched the lives of your children and may they be greatly blessed and greatly protected. Even through this camera, I speak as they look onto that television screen and they're watching this teaching. Whatever platform they're watching through the social media, may the blood of Jesus be sprinkled upon their lives and their families be protected and every evil influence be broken in the name of Jesus and there shall be victory. Thank you for it is done. Sickness, I command to go. Healing, I command to take place in every sick body. And I release prosperity and peace, security and rest in every family. I release financial blessings upon families. Thank you for it is done. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you richly. 
I believe you've, you've been blessed. If you're blessed, do let us know. Write to us. Call our prayer volunteers. We'll be glad to know how it's been a blessing to you and we can pray with you. I'll see you again next week.